Henry IV was King of England and Lord of Ireland. He was the tenth King of England of the House of Plantagenet and also asserted his grandfather's claim to the title King of France. He was born at Bolingbroke Castle in Lincolnshire, hence his other name, Henry Bolingbroke. His father, John of Gaunt, was the third son of Edward III, and enjoyed a position of considerable influence during much of the reign of Henry's cousin Richard II, whom Henry eventually deposed. Henry's mother was Blanche, heiress to the considerable Lancaster estates, and thus he became the first King of England from the Lancaster branch of the Plantagenets. Siblings, one of Henry's elder sisters, Philippa of Lancaster, married John I of Portugal, and the other, Elizabeth, was the mother of John Holland, second Duke of Exeter. His younger half-sister Catherine, the daughter of his father's second wife, Constance of Castile, was Queen Consort of Castile. He also had four half-siblings by Catherine Swineford, originally his sister's governess, then his father's long-standing mistress, and later his third wife. These four children were given the surname Beaufort after a castle their father held in Champagne, France. Henry's relationship with his stepmother, Catherine Swineford, was a positive one, but his relationship with the Beauforts varied. In youth he seems to have been close to all of them, but rivalries with Henry and Thomas Beaufort proved problematic after 1406. His brother-in-law Ralph Neville remained one of his strongest supporters, and so did his eldest half-brother John Beaufort, even though Henry revoked Richard II's grant to John of a Marquisate. Thomas Swineford, a son from Catherine's first marriage to Sir Hugh Swineford, was another loyal companion. Thomas was constable of Pontefract Castle, where King Richard II is said to have died. Henry's half-sister Joan Beaufort through his father's relationship with Catherine Swineford was the grandmother of Edward IV and Richard III. Joan had married Ralph Neville, the first Earl of Westmoreland. When their daughter Cecily married Richard Plantagenet, the third Duke of York, and had several offspring, including Edward IV and Richard III, Joan became the grandmother of two York kings of England. These Yorks later fought the descendants of the Lancastrian Henry IV in the War of the Roses. The sides became reconciled when her great-granddaughter Elizabeth of York married the Lancastrian heir Henry VII. Relationship with Richard II First cousins and childhood playmates, Richard and Henry were admitted together to the Order of the Garter in 1377, and Henry was for a time a member of the royal household. He participated in the Lord's Appellant's Rebellion against the King in 1387. After regaining power, Richard did not punish Henry, although he did execute or exile many of the other rebellious barons. In fact, Richard elevated Henry from Earl of Derby to Duke of Hereford. Henry spent the full year of 1390 supporting the unsuccessful siege of Vilnius by Teutonic Knights with his 300 fellow knights. During this campaign he bought 300 captured Lithuanian princes and then apparently took them back to England. Henry's second expedition to Lithuania in 1392 illustrates the financial benefits to the order of these guest crusaders. His small army consisted of over 100 men, including longbow archers and six minstrels, at a total cost to the Lancastrian purse of a £4,360. Despite the efforts of Henry and his English crusaders, two years of attacks on Vilnius proved fruitless. In 1392 a Euro 93 Henry undertook a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, where he made offerings at the Holy Sepulchre and at the Mount of Olives. Later he vowed to lead a crusade to free Jerusalem from the infidel, but he died before this could be accomplished. The relationship between Henry Bolingbroke and the king met with a second crisis. In 1398, a remark by Bolingbroke regarding Richard II's rule was interpreted as treason by Thomas de Mowbray, 1st Duke of Norfolk. The two dukes agreed to undergo a duel of honour at Gosford Green near Caludon Castle, Mowbray's home in Coventry. Yet before the duel could take place, Richard II decided to banish Henry from the kingdom to avoid further bloodshed. Mowbray himself was exiled for life. John of Gaunt died in 1399. Without explanation, Richard cancelled the legal documents that would have allowed Henry to inherit Gaunt's land automatically. Instead, Henry would be required to ask for the lands from Richard. After some hesitation, Henry met with the exiled Thomas Arundel, 
former Archbishop of Canterbury, who had lost his position because of his involvement with the Lord's Appellant. Henry and Arundel returned to England while Richard was on a military campaign in Ireland. With Arundel as his adviser, Henry began a military campaign, confiscating land from those who opposed him and ordering his soldiers to destroy much of Cheshire. Henry quickly gained enough power and support to have himself declared King Henry IV, imprison King Richard and bypass Richard's seven-year-old heir presumptive, Edmund de Mortimer. Henry's coronation, on October 13, 1399, may have marked the first time following the Norman conquest when the monarch made an address in English. Henry consulted with Parliament frequently, but was sometimes at odds with the members, especially over ecclesiastical matters. On Arundel's advice, Henry obtained from Parliament the enactment of De Heretico Comburendo in 1401, which prescribed the burning of heretics. This was done mainly to suppress the Lollard movement. In 1410, Parliament suggested confiscating church land. Henry refused to attack the church that had helped him to power, and the House of Commons had to beg for the bill to be struck off the record. Reign. The previous ruler, Henry's first major problem as monarch was what to do with the deposed Richard. After an early assassination plot was foiled in January 1400, Richard died in prison, probably of starvation. He was 33 years old. Though Henry is often suspected of having his predecessor murdered, there is no substantial evidence to prove that claim. Some chroniclers claim that the despondent Richard had starved himself, which would not have been out of place with what is known of Richard's character. Though council records indicate that provisions were made for the transportation of the deposed king's body as early as February 17, there is no reason to believe that he did not die on February 14, as several chronicles stated. It can be positively said that he did not suffer a violent death, for his skeleton, upon examination, bore no signs of violence. Whether he did indeed starve himself or whether that starvation was forced upon him are matters for lively historical speculation. After his death, Richard's body was put on public display in the old St. Paul's Cathedral to prove to his supporters that he was truly dead, though this did not stop rumors from circulating for years after that he was still alive and waiting to take back his throne. Henry had Richard discreetly buried in the Dominican Priory at Kings Langley, Hertfordshire, where he remained until King Henry V brought his body back to London and buried him in the tomb that Richard had commissioned for himself in Westminster Abbey. Rebellions Henry spent much of his reign defending himself against plots, rebellions and assassination attempts. Epiphany Rising In early 1400 John Holland, 1st Earl of Huntingdon, and his nephew Thomas Holland, 3rd Earl of Kent, Thomas Le Despencer, 4th Baron Le Despencer plotted to assassinate Henry while he was at a tournament at Windsor on Epiphany and restore Richard to the throne. The plan was discovered and the conspirators apprehended. Glinda Micron arising, in late 1400 in Wales, led by Owain Glinda Micron R assumed the ancient title of Prince of Wales. The English Parliament responded to the uprising by passing penal laws against Wales. Students at Oxford University left their studies to fight for Glinda Micron R. Welsh labourers and craftsmen abandoned their employers in England and returned to Wales in droves. Intermittent hostilities continued to about 1414. Percy Rebellion Between 1402 and 1408 the Percy family and their supporters made three attempts by to overthrow Henry. Battle of Shrewsbury King Henry IV defeated a rebel army led by Henry Hotspur Percy who had allied with the Welsh rebel Owain Glinda Micron R. Percy was killed in the battle by an arrow to his face. Thomas Percy, 1st Earl of Worcester, Sir Richard Venables and Sir Richard Vernon were publicly hanged, drawn and quartered in Shrewsbury on July 23 and their heads publicly displayed. The Earl of Northumberland fled to Scotland. Archbishop of York Richard Le Scrub led a failed rebellion in northern England. Scrub and other rebel leaders were executed. The Earl of Northumberland again fled to Scotland. Battle of Bramham Muir. The Earl of Northumberland invaded northern England with Scottish and Northumbrian allies but was defeated and killed in battle. The king's success in putting down these rebellions was due partly to the military ability of his eldest son, Henry of the Monmouth who later became king. 
the old fable of a living Richard was revived, notes one account, and emissaries from Scotland traversed the villages of England, in the last year of Henry's reign, declaring that Richard was residing at the Scottish court, awaiting only a signal from his friends to repair to London and recover his throne. A suitable-looking impostor was found and King Richard's old groom circulated word in the city that his master was alive in Scotland. Southwark was incited to insurrection by Sir Elias Livett and his associate Thomas Clark, who promised Scottish aid in carrying out the insurrection. Ultimately, the rebellion came to naught. The night Livett was released and his follower thrown into the tower. Foreign relations, early in his reign, Henry hosted the visit of Manuel to Palaiologos, the only Byzantine emperor ever to visit England, from December 1400 to January 1401 at Eltham Palace with a joust being given in his honour. He also sent monetary support with him upon his departure to aid him against the Ottoman Empire. In 1406 English pirates captured the future James I of Scotland off the coast of Flamborough ahead as he was going to France. James was delivered to the English king and remained a prisoner for the rest of Henry's reign. Final illness and death, the later years of Henry's reign were marked by serious health problems. He had a disfiguring skin disease and, more seriously, suffered acute attacks of some grave illness in June 1405. April 1406. June 1408. During the winter of 1408 to Euro 09. December 1412. And finally a fatal bout in March 1413. Medical historians have long debated the nature of this affliction or afflictions. The skin disease might have been leprosy, perhaps psoriasis, or some other disease. The acute attacks have been given a wide range of explanations, from epilepsy to some form of cardiovascular disease. Some medieval writers felt that he was struck with leprosy as a punishment for his treatment of Richard Le Scrope, Archbishop of York, who was executed in June 1405 on Henry's orders after a failed coup. According to Hollenscht, it was predicted that Henry would die in Jerusalem, and Shakespeare's play repeats this prophecy. Henry took this to mean that he would die on crusade. In reality, he died in the Jerusalem chamber in the abbot's house of Westminster Abbey, on March 20, 1413 during a convocation of Parliament. His executor, Thomas Langley, was at his side. Burial, despite the example set by most of his recent predecessors, Henry and his second wife, Joan of Navarre, Queen of England, were buried not at Westminster Abbey but at Canterbury Cathedral, on the north side of Trinity Chapel and directly adjacent to the shrine of St. Thomas Becket. Becket's cult was then still thriving, as evidenced in the monastic accounts and in literary works such as Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, and Henry seemed particularly devoted to it, or at least keen to be associated with it. Reasons for his interment in Canterbury are debatable but it is highly likely that Henry deliberately associated himself with the martyr saint for reasons of political expediency, namely, the legitimation of his dynasty after seizing the throne from Richard II. Significantly, at his coronation, he was anointed with holy oil that had reportedly been given to Becket by the Virgin Mary shortly before his death in 1170. This oil was placed inside a distinct eagle-shaped container of gold. According to one version of the tale, the oil had then passed to Henry's maternal grandfather, Henry of Grismont, 1st Duke of Lancaster. Proof of Henry's deliberate connection to St. Thomas lies partially in the structure of the tomb itself. The wooden panel at the western end of his tomb bears a painting of the martyrdom of Becket, and the tester, or wooden canopy, above the tomb is painted with Henry's personal motto, Sovereign, alternated by crowned golden eagles. Likewise, the three large coats of arms that dominate the tester painting are surrounded by collars of SS, a golden eagle enclosed in each turret. The presence of such eagle motifs points directly to Henry's coronation oil and his ideological association with St. Thomas. Sometime after the king's death, an imposing tomb was built for him and his queen, most likely commissioned and paid for by Queen Joan herself. Atop the tomb chest lie detailed alabaster effigies of the king and queen crowned and dressed in their ceremonial robes. Henry's body was evidently well embalmed, as an exhumation in 1832 established, 
allowing historians to state with reasonable certainty that the effigies do represent accurate portraiture. Arms Before his father's death in 1399, Henry bore the arms of the kingdom, differenced by a label of five points ermine. After his father's death, the difference changed to a label of five points per pale ermine in France. Upon his accession as king, Henry updated the arms of the kingdom to match an update in those of royal France a euro from a field of fleur de lis to just three. Seniority in line from Edward III, when Richard II was forced to abdicate the throne in 1399, Henry was next in line to the throne according to Edward III's entailment of 1376. But the heir of the royal estate according to the common law was Edmund Mortimer, 5th Earl of March, who descended from the daughter of Edward III's second son, Lionel of Antwerp. Bolingbroke's father, John of Gaunt, was Edward's third son. The problem was solved by emphasizing Henry's descent in a direct male line, whereas March's descent was through his grandmother. The official account of events claims that Richard voluntarily agreed to resign his crown to Henry on September 29. The country had rallied behind Henry and supported his claim in Parliament. However, the question of the succession never went away. He was heir according to Edward III's entail to the crown of 1376, but, as Dr. Ian Mortimer has recently pointed out in his biography of Henry IV, this had probably been supplanted by an entail of Richard II made in 1399. Henry thus had to overcome the superior claim of the Mortimers in order to maintain his inheritance. This difficulty compounded when the Mortimer claim was merged with a Yorkist claim in the person of Richard Plantagenet, Duke of York. The Duke of York was the heir general of Edward III, and the heir presumptive of Henry's grandson Henry VI. The House of Lancaster was finally deposed by Edward IV, son of Richard Plantagenet, Duke of York, during the Wars of the Roses. The following are the senior descendants of Edward III. The descendants that were alive at the death of Richard II are in bold. Edward III of England. Edward, the Black Prince. Edward Richard II of England. Lionel of Antwerp, 1st Duke of Clarence. Philippa of Clarence, 5th Countess of Ulster. Roger Mortimer, 4th Earl of March. Edmund Mortimer, 5th Earl of March. Roger Mortimer, Anne de Mortimer, Eleanor. Edmund Mortimer, Lady Elizabeth de Mortimer, Lady Philippa de Mortimer. John of Gaunt, 1st Duke of Lancaster. Henry IV of England. Edmund of Langley, 1st Duke of York. Edward, Duke of Ormal, later declined Earl of Rutland, Richard of Conisberg. 3rd Earl of Cambridge. Thomas of Woodstock, 1st Duke of Gloucester. Humphrey, 2nd Earl of Buckingham, Anne of Gloucester married Thomas Stafford, 3rd Earl of Stafford. Edmund Stafford, 5th Earl of Stafford. And William Borchia, 1st Count of Yew. Her son by third marriage was John Borchia, 1st Baron Bernas. Joan of Gloucester married Gilbert Talbot, 5th Baron Talbot. Died in childbirth. Isabel of Gloucester, Philippa of Gloucester died young. Ancestry, marriage and issue, the date and venue of Henry's first marriage, to Mary de Bowen, are uncertain but her marriage license, purchased by Henry's father, John of Gaunt, in June 1380 is retained at the National Archives. The accepted date of the ceremony is February 5, 1381, at Mary's family home of Rochford Hall, Essex. Alternately, the near contemporary chronicler Jean Fouassart reports a rumour that Mary's sister Eleanor de Bowen kidnapped Mary from Plachet Castle and held her at Arundel Castle, where she was kept as a novice nun in order to keep her half of the de Bowen inheritance under Eleanor's control. There, Mary was persuaded to marry Henry. They had six children Henry V of England, Thomas of Lancaster, 1st Duke of Clarence, John of Lancaster, 1st Duke of Bedford, Humphrey of Lancaster. 1st Duke of Gloucester, Blanche of England married in 1402 Louis III, Elector Palatine, Philippa of England married in 1406 Eric of Pomerania, King of Denmark, Norway and Sweden. Mary died in 1394, and on February 7, 1403 Henry married Joanna of Navarre, the daughter of Charles D. A. Pamel Ray, King of Navarre, at Winchester. She was the widow of John V. of Brittany, with whom she had had four daughters and four sons. However, 
her marriage with the King of England was to be childless. But Henry had already four sons from his first marriage, which was undoubtedly a clinching factor in his acceptability for the throne. By contrast, Richard II had no children and Richard's heir presumptive Edmund Mortimer was only seven years old. The only two of Henry's six children who produced children to survive to adulthood were Henry V and Humphrey, Duke of Gloucester. Henry IV's male Lancaster line ended in 1471 during the War of the Roses, between the Lancastrians and the Yorkists, with the deaths of his grandson Henry VI and Henry VI's son Edward, Prince of Wales. Henry IV's son, Humphrey, Duke of Gloucester's descendants include Elizabeth Bowes Lyon, wife of George VI and mother of Elizabeth II, and the Queen's current daughters-in-law, Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall and Sophie, Countess of Wessex. See also, Cultural Depictions of Henry IV of England, Neige Priory Corbald Heads of Henry IV and Joanna celebrating their marriage, at the manor of Mary de Bowen's late and powerful great-aunt, Margaret de Bowen, notes. References, Ian Mortimer, The Fears of Henry IV, The Life of England's Self-Made King, Antiquary S99, 369. External links, Henry IV at the official website of the British Monarchy, Henry IV at BBC History